Hey, today I will interview with Lawrence Vaughn Thomas, a serial entrepreneur that I have met in Startup Weekend. His latest project is Reflex. It is about bringing back the analog SLR camera, which is the coolest project I've ever heard about cameras. The Kickstarter campaign has gone beyond its goal of £100,000 in 2017. In Startup Weekend, he is a mentor to the participants. I'm going to ask him about his startup, why did he join Startup Weekend, and any tips he has to offer to young entrepreneur. Enjoy! Hi, Lawrence. We will start with some questions to warm up. Yep. Mac or PC? Mac. iPhone or Android? iPhone. Tea or coffee? Both. Both. WhatsApp or WeChat? WeChat. Cool. Can you spend a moment to describe yourself? Uh, sure. Um, so I started photography in high school. Uh, at the age of 16, we were allowed to do um, uh, the direction in art. Uh, and um, I was always interested in photography and, and filmmaking. And then um, I had a few very good teachers, actually very young ones that just gradu graduated themselves. So uh, they inspired me a lot and uh, then I went to uni and so I'm from Belgium originally and uh, I went to uni in my uh, my hometown and I didn't graduate uh, and I I think it's because I, I had these, these very good teachers in, in high school going to uni felt like a step backwards the, the, the teachers that were there weren't very motivated at all so I actually had a, a disagreements one day and um, that was the end of my of my career in, uh, in university um, so I started working on a lot of film sets and uh, my dream was always to to end up uh, in film as either a director or a uh, director of photography and um, I pursued photography and director of photography and I think I had a slight advantage over, so the school that I was in, I still kept in touch with my, my schoolmates and uh, I had some slight advantage over shooting on, on film, 35mm, 16mm, 8mm. And so, one hand I was working in the film industry as a, as a young assistant and on the other hand I was uh, doing a lot of film work for my, my co-students. Co I did that for a, a number of years in Belgium. And one of the things as a young uh, director and young cinematographer, what you do is you make a lot of music videos because you have a lot of young uh, friends that are also need music videos because they have bands. And that's kind of like the only thing that you can do on a budget and you can do, you can, you know, come up with your own ideas and you have all freedom. So we used to do a lot of that. And I saw that there was actually uh, because of this, there was a lot of creativity in it, and not only in Belgium. This was when the internet was sort of, you know, coming up. Um, mm. However, for video, it was it was not quite ready yet. And uh, what what years was this? So this is two thousand and around two thousand and five. Oh, okay. And then um, yeah, and um, I'm, yeah, two thousand and five. So a lot of social media is still at its uh, infancy, right? It's still starting. Yeah, yeah. 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 We are talking uh, in the middle of MySpace and uh, yeah. no real uh, social media wasn't connected yet with uh, other platforms in terms of uh, like it, it was still its own island. And uh, I thought, well, okay, so the, the, at some point I started to, to we, 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 we had a bit of an international scene going on. Uh, there was a few really good bands coming out of my, my hometown. And so we were lucky to ride on their coattail as young filmmakers and, and actually meet a lot of international uh, young filmmakers too. And I realized, look, there's so much good content being made, but there is not really a platform for them to show it because music television is limited because it's a, a linear medium. You only have 24 hours a day, but on the other hand, it's also full of commercials. And, and this was at a time where it was also becoming a lot of reality shows and a lot of Mm. Very bad R and D because um, a, lo a lot of record labels pushed uh, some commercial bands, and mm. you know it, it wasn't it wasn't great anymore MTV and, 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 and 
so many other music video platforms. So I thought, well, the, the internet seems like a very interesting thing to uh, start. Um, a, a, a non-linear platform so that they could show more content. And this was when YouTube was about a year and a half old and Vimeo was a good year. And uh, I looked at Vimeo and they had these very good quality, um, very good quality content in terms of, uh, of compression. Hmm. But they were using QuickTime uh, format, which was big file sizes. And for a music video, which is three minutes, three three to four minutes. Mm. That's that was quite a big file size. It's too much for the servers. Still, yeah. You, you will well and you were you were still as a client, you were still paying five, ten dollars per gigabyte extra. Oh right, so, right, because it's limited. Yeah, yeah. Back then it, they don't have like so you, you Oh right. You didn't want to watch uh, a lot of music videos. And then YouTube yep. came with the alternative and said, okay well we're, we're gonna get the file size down. But the compression was shit. You just basically saw squares uh, if you wanted to compress it. Yeah, pixelated. They are all pixelated. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was okay for like 30, 40 second content, mm. uh, but it wasn't just. It was just not very good. And we were lucky to come in, as I said, about almost two years later after these guys started. With, um, so I thought, okay, well, it doesn't exist yet. I'm going to set up a music video platform online. Music to show alternative content, and um, and we, I, I was lucky to have a friend back from, from that art high school that started its own uh, its own website uh, design company, and I had a few ideas, and then we, but I thought well, I, I definitely want to um, have control over all the content and over the, the compression and the quality, and when we came in, the, you know, technology was. Uh, moving rapidly and we had this compression called service and compression which gave us the quality of Vimeo and the file size of YouTube so we went in there and mm. we were immediately um, you know we, we moved up immediately in, in the, the ratings and because we were an international platform lots of international bands um, and we were the first platform that really promoted some of the, the production companies and the, and the record labels their alternative um, uh, catalog mm. they they also were supporting us so immediately we like we gained a lot of content and everything was going really well so I moved from Belgium to London because that's where all the content was was happening uh, MySpace was doing also something that musicians have, had never done before they were uh, setting up their own small record labels they why because of you know you could democratic MySpace was was the outlet that uh, an artist could never have under the record label if, if the record label didn't use any promotional budget on them. Mm -hmm. But then Lily Allen, Arctic Monkeys, all these guys started to do it for the first time. They reached millions of people. Um, so the old the whole industry was changing. The music industry was completely upside down. But it was a, a very interesting time. So I moved to London, and this is the year that if you ever if you've ever seen the film Social Network. Yes, I've seen it. <laughs> this is the, yeah, so the same summer that, that Mark Zuckerberg moves from Harvard, I think, or Stanford, I don't, I don't remember which one it was, to Harvard, Silicon yeah. Valley and then bumps into the Napster guy that gives him his first 500 million. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, well, that summer, that's the same summer that I moved with the, the platform is called Videology to London. Cool. And as I said, content wise, um, that was the right move, but it was the wrong move to, to seek investment. Oh. Because in Europe, Especially back then, we, we didn't have a, a high-risk investment uh, tradition. So you don't have VCs for that? Anyways. Yeah. Yeah, and, and it, it just we, we didn't have that, that culture that Americans... Yeah. ...where they just do high-risk investment. Even now, today, I'm pretty sure it's the same thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, now... Um, so then, also, it was running up to the, to the credit crunch, mm. uh, so 2008. Mm. Uh, 2009, everything everything grinded to a halt. And what I saw that afterwards, now at least London, maybe Europe, not quite, but London, Berlin, some hubs started to become more techy and more more high risk investment. Uh, obviously, because then you saw the the new wave. I mean, you, you came out of the dot com, which didn't, yeah, uh, the dot com bubble didn't didn't gain a lot of confidence as well. But then you saw the move into like you know, modern tech, 
Vancouver or all of that stuff, Airbnb coming up. Yeah. So of course it was a new scene that created and attracted investors. But um, I was not prepared to play on that on that level financially. I'd never really run that type of startup or, or pitch or, or you know so and I was in the wrong country, which is something that later on when we started to run into financial trouble um i realized um so but but it was it was a very good experience and i i do not see it as a failure because we we were in the top 20 uk websites at some point we were globally we, we were in the top 100 um we uh, at some point we we had access to to two one very big musician, one very big um, music video director, and uh, that killed our, our, uh, our server, but it also killed our uh, hosting bill, um, and that <laughs> shut down oh. that month because we didn't. Uh, yeah, but as I, because of that, I never saw it as a failure. Uh, yeah, because it was actually quite successful, but I, I didn't I didn't have a revenue model. The, the, the business model didn't understand. The year that I stopped, which so then it was around 2009, so I, I tried for, for a good two years, um, including beta in the beginning. Uh, and the year that I closed the books was the year that YouTube, uh, sorry, Google bought YouTube for 1.6 billion, but they were only making a revenue of 140 million at that point. Why? Because they also yep. didn't have a, a revenue model yet. Yeah. Model. So I was in that same boat. Um, and if I would have found my investor, yeah, you could have been the YouTube. <laughs> you could have been the, yeah, well, yeah. I could, that could have been a, 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 an interesting alternative when it came yeah. to uh, online videos. Yeah, content for 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 young video makers. Yeah, yeah. I, I think if, if I uh, look at at the numbers that we had. Uh, you know, it's a fun afterthought, and, 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 and sometimes I look back at it and, and, and realize that, you know, it was. I wish I made some some decisions differently, but otherwise, I also know that I, I, I was probably not prepared yet for it, especially on on the business side. Uh, yeah. I came out of Belgium. I did not have any any uh, entrepreneur background. But I think you did well. I, I think you did real well already. Yeah. It was it was a very it was a very interesting project and I learned a lot from it and actually from that project um, all that I learned um, I I started to organically pour into my own project after that I needed a sole project uh, something to mm. like you know give me some more confidence and I also realized that I actually uh, invested a lot of time in, into this this, this platform mm. so I realized that if if I want to do something new. Uh, it's going to be one, two, three years, and I might as well uh, think about it twice. So I needed a, a different project, and I set up. This was when Tumblr was starting to hit, mm. um, and Tumblr was the platform that I set up this photo blog, which was initially just my own photography. Um, but I, I also saw that on Flickr there were a lot of young photographers that I. When, when I, I had this sort of mm, very alternative style of, of, of photography, that mm. shooting film, 35 mil, and I had a specific style that wasn't portrait, it wasn't art or fine art photography, it wasn't documentary, it was something that looked even more like you know, painting than, than photography. Um, and, I, and I'd always thought in Belgium, you know, because the internet was not um, busy connecting people yet. Mm that I was sort of, you know, on my own in, in this style. And then with Flickr, I sort of see that like there's this whole bunch of subcultures that started to become quite big. And so I started posting some other people's work. And what I was doing without knowing it is as I was bringing uh, fresh content from Flickr into Tumblr and therefore becoming an original content, content creator. Um, and we went, this blog went on and at some point I put, took myself out of the equation because it started to become a, an online gallery where, and I had this thing that I, I would publish one photographer every day. This uh, if you leave, right? Usually, yes. Yes, yeah. okay. They were usually quite young photographers yeah. and um, 
And then at some point we must have, you know, side guys, uh, I don't know, we, we must have hit a, a right uh, string and um, we were put on, on the radar of Tumblr. The radar is like what uh, their own editors liked and want you to follow. And this was when Tumblr was like booming, so everyone was registered at Tumblr. Mm. And if you wanted to register at Tumblr, one of the things was that you had to follow five blogs, just to begin with. Oh. And the most popular segment on Tumblr at the time was photography, and then the, the editors of, of Tumblr um, gave you the choice out of only 10 photo blogs, and they were like Time Life magazine, uh, Magnum Photo, uh, you know, all the big guns. Mm. And then we were there with a few leads. Uh, I still don't know, like, in a way, how that happened, but we exploded in a couple of months' time. And we started getting press, and then I thought, well, again, this is not, you know, there's no business model here because I didn't want it to be a business. It was supposed to be my own blog. Um, and so I thought, well, I'll, I'll publish a book, and then we ended up, and then becoming a publisher, a book publisher, because of that. Um, and uh, it it was something that I don't know. As I said, it was never intended to be anything. Else. Yeah, it was your passion. Yeah. Uh, yeah, um, and and then it, it exploded, and it, and it was this global thing that, mm. that, that also is interesting because you, you have no borders on the internet, or back then it was even a little bit more loose, even to a point that uh, at this point Tumblr was still open in China, and uh, at some point I get an email from a, a, a newspaper, a traditional newspaper in Beijing, mm -hmm. where the hard segment, the weekend segment, wanted to publish about if you leave. Mm. Because there were a few Chinese um, photographers, mm -hmm. photographers in there as well. And so all of a sudden we're, we're in, an, in a Chinese newspaper and the next week we get like 120,000 new followers from China. Wow, that's nice. <laughs> It, yeah, it was it was very interesting, yeah. and then and then Tumblr got shut down, and then oh yeah, yeah. yeah that was the end of it. I mean, in China at least. Uh, and then later on, Tumblr got bought by uh, Yahoo, and that was the end of Tumblr. Yeah, <laughs> that's when that's when essentially killed it. Yeah. But luckily, I I sort of saw, you know. The, I always keep an eye out on, on, on trend. The and I yeah, saw the trend. Yeah, yeah, the trends were, were going towards Facebook pages. Yep. Uh, so this is still free Instagram, and so we went on to pages. So we sort of served. We, we jumped on a different wave. Tumblr was still going, but you know we made sure that there was a second platform. Uh, to meantime, we were publishing, and uh, and then Instagram happened, and then we jumped onto Instagram, and now okay, we are. We are definitely, um, we, we, we have about 150, 160,000 followers, uh, 153 I think at the moment, um, on Instagram, but it is definitely not the, the, the size of what it was on Tumblr, we were hitting close to it then, uh, yeah. at, at, at its peak. Um, but again, it, it, it was a very fun project, it's still, I still do it, uh, even though at the moment, because I have my, my new business, it's it's low key, um, mm. but again, it was it was hard to, 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 to really really come up with a good business model. And then, because the, the, I'd been in this whole photography loop since I was sixteen, uh, and I you know was taking cameras apart as a camera assistant mm. when I was young, and then on film sets, and then I was taking photos all the time. Uh, and then I had a, had a, a platform that I, where I curated, curated content, you know, my, the feedback loop. And then I, when I was in London and I, when I used to be poor, uh, I used to buy e cameras on eBay, fix them and sell them on the market. Ah. So, uh, you know, I was going through this whole thing. And then in 2014, we did a Kickstarter for If You Leave. Um, this was when Kickstarter was just out. And I think we were one of the first UK uh, because we still had to launch it on Kickstarter US. Um, UK projects to come on Kickstarter and this reflex, all, right? Uh, no, this was for if you leave to, to 2014. Oh, the 2014 uh, before. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a small Kickstarter campaign for a, for an exhibition that we wanted to do and a magazine oh. that we wanted to publish. But came out of it that I wanted to offer the um, the finalists of our of our. Uh, 
it was like a submission call and an exhibition. Mm. Uh, there, there was supposed to be three winners, and I wanted to give all of them a camera, but I wanted to give them a film camera because it was mainly analog photography. Mm. And I realized that there was only one more model that was being made in the whole world uh, because everyone that obviously is gone digital, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So the only model that was at that, at that point that was made was, was still, still being made was um, the Nikon FM10, which was already uh, outsourced by Nikon to a different company, Corsica. Um, and I realized that, you know, at some point this is going to stop probably because I checked on the, the production of that camera and it wasn't, it, 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 it wasn't, uh, like, it didn't feel like the production was still very much alive. So I was like, well, they're going to stop, they're going to pull the plug on this camera. And then uh, that will be the end. There, there, there will only be a, a $5,000 Leica left and a, a $3,000 uh, high-end Nikon camera and that's it. So I thought, well, that's interesting. At some point, like what happened to the to the vinyl industry, it refused to die. People were actually loving the quality of, 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 the, of the records, and um, there was a resurgence. And because of that, there were new record plays being made by by different companies, and updated them and put USB you know connections on it. And um, and I thought, well, maybe film is going to go the same way. Um, but at the time, I didn't. I'm not an engineer, uh, you know, um, I didn't have time to do it. And then three years later, um, 2017, I, yeah, we had a flood in the stockroom of my publishing company. Uh, we had to sh shut everything down. Luckily, I was insured, but I had to wait for insurance. And I told myself, like, look, maybe uh, no one's done the camera yet. Maybe I should do it. So I started to design. A camera, something that I figured made sense, um, and then we went on Kickstarter, and then we raised uh, hundred and in dollars. It was around hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Yeah. Um, and now I'm in Shenzhen, so trying to make this camera, and, and I'm already nine months late, and um, we had. Uh, corona disaster. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I mean, Corona is for everyone. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but, but, but the, some other things were typically startup related yeah. and hardware startup related. Yeah. And, and rookie mistakes. Yeah. I mean, I take full responsibility for, 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 for a lot of things, not everything. Hmm. Um, so, yeah. All right. uh, that brings us to. No. Yeah, so um, uh, will you be able to make uh, your Kickstarter like deadline or is it past deadline? It's past deadline. Nine. Oh, it's past deadline. Okay, okay. Yeah, we were supposed to ship uh, uh, August last year. Oh, <laughs> okay. okay. Um, yeah. And, uh, but, you know, it, yeah. we're not dead, so we're still. Yeah, dead. yeah, so you'll make it, don't worry. And, so. Uh, yeah, I've got a, I've got a new, a new team of engineers. So I came back end of March. I was one of the, the last days that we were we were allowed to enter uh, China, hmm. and um, yeah, got a new team together. And the good thing is that there's not much pressure at the moment because everyone's just focusing on themselves and trying to survive. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and also, no point coming to the market at the moment. It, with anything um, fair yeah. that we were supposed to go to in end of May in Germany, one of the, the larger photo fairs cancelled. Yeah. So actually, at the moment, uh, um, I have something that I, I haven't had uh, in in these two years of, 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 of trying to make this camera, and that is time. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's quite a story. <laughs> Yes. Uh, it's, it's um, I'm a little bit moved by this story. This is amazing. <laughs> you're, you're quite an adventurer. I mean, for, for people like me, I just go to school and then get a job, and then here I am. <laughs> so, wow. It's just... Well, <laughs> sometimes it, 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 I, I wish I, I was exactly like what you say uh, that you, you are, but because it, it's. Uh, 
yeah yeah it's a it's a whole path and and um i don't know sometimes i wish i was a bit more conventional okay <laughs> i guess that's but you don't okay. yeah <laughs> It's too late now for me though. So <laughs> too, yeah. It's beyond the point. Of yeah, that. yeah. So uh, uh, you you mentioned some regret for like uh, before from vide- uh, videology. Can you can you talk more about that? Like what what would you do different as an entrepreneur? You, 